My name is Robert Cipilla. And I'm Monica Cipilla. And we're the owners of Revived Exteriors in Arlington Heights, Illinois. You can see behind me, there's no chimney from the top of the ridge uh, all the way to the top of the next ridge. Just looking at the whole project of how it went, we're like, that's something we could do. That, that's something that we could, could be better. interesting and we could do it better. Take a look at behind me. That's the drunk roofer special. That's what you get for cheaper. Look at all those waves. And if you look, there's thousands and thousands of homes where they have no fences around them right now because they were torn apart. I keep learning from them a lot and I, I love it. I think we both equally learn from each other. My name is Robert Cipilla. And I'm Monica Cipilla. And we're the owners of Revived Exteriors in Arlington Heights, Illinois. So we're in Woodridge, the suburbs of Chicago. Huge, massive tornado, uh, EF3 came through here and destroyed some homes, actually leveled some homes, along with devastating losses to lots of uh, exterior structures. Luckily, nobody, was, uh, nobody passed away from it. Uh, granted, some people did have some minor injuries, but luckily everyone made it out alive, which is very rare in a situation like this. Um, and if you saw the damages that we saw, the trees that were down, the devastation in this neighborhood, it was unreal. Trees everywhere, trucks everywhere, you could barely get a car through here. Uh, right now, you can see most of the mess has been cleaned up, and uh, yeah, we're starting to do uh, the, the repairs now that were necessary to bring it back to pre-loss condition. So we've been in business 10 years. Uh, I come, both of us come from a banking background as bankers. Uh, about 10 years ago, we noticed a demand for communication in the construction industry and a lot of contractors who, unfortunately, the, at the front lines would change their business name every two years. And I found it uh, pretty sick to see companies changing their name so they wouldn't have to honor their warranty and then laugh about it. Uh, I'm a second generation contractor and we bought flipped houses and apartments for a living yeah, before we, doing this. We always had passion for construction. So one of the key things that differentiates us between all the other roofing companies is the standard for installing shingles is four nails. If you look at our installs, we use six nails minimum per shingle. This is just to make sure that we secure that shingle so aggressively that it's never gonna come off that roof. We don't wanna come back for leak calls. We wanna come back to do your other projects like your siding or your windows. So both of us, when we met, when we got married, right away we knew we wanted to own our own business. It was just a matter of finding, finding the right industry, right? That would, right. Uh, would spark our interest. And, and we started with roofing. We actually, our roof was damaged on our house. Um, and we had a company that did our roof. And, and I guess just looking at the whole project of how it went, we we're like, that's something we could do. That, that's something that we could, could do be interesting and we can do it better. Um, and that's how we started 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. One of the components I forgot to mention when I'm installing the ice and water shield is to install it in all the valleys. So anytime you have two roofs adjoining next to each other, you want to install the ice and water shield in those valleys as well to prevent any water from getting in there since that is a high susceptibility of leaks. And while we're here, take a look at behind me. That's the drunk roofer special. That's what you get for cheaper. Look at all those waves. Wave of that roof. <laughs> anyway, going on. I learned from my parents, they're both entrepreneurs, that uh, uh, your word is the most important thing and following through on your word is essential. And if you're not willing to do that, don't start the business, pick something else. We keep getting the same question from people, how is it working together in the business? Um, people keep saying, you know, I would not be able to work with my wife or with my spouse. And honestly, it's been amazing. It's been really good. It's been a great journey. I think it brought us closer together. Um, you know, in our relationship, we, we fill the little gaps that are there. Um, I mean, Rob is the one in with the field. With a lot of gaps. <laughs> so he's the one in the field dealing with the customers more face to face. I'm more in the office, but I'm, I'm the numbers girl. Um, I love digging into data, finding the little you know issues that are there, getting them resolved. And and he's more hands on person. You know, when he when he meets with a customer, I mean, he can put out any fire, uh, which is great. So I. I keep learning from him a lot and I, I love it. I think we both equally learn from each other. 2016 Mercedes Metris. I love this car. It's actually perfect for my type of business. If you own a roofing company 
or any type of mechanical or construction company, I would highly recommend purchasing this for multiple different reasons. It's got uh, turbo on it and it's a four cylinder, so it's got pretty good pickup. So if you're on the highway and you need to get into traffic or pass somebody, it's really easy to do. And then the other thing that's my favorite is the turning radius on this thing is unbelievable. Um, I can't even do this with my truck or my car. Before I open up the back, I do want to point out I have a 40 foot ladder on this uh, van. Uh, on the newer version, we actually added a roof rack that actually swings out on both sides. I would recommend it, especially if you have a longer rack. Plus it's easier to take it down, but it does fit a 40 footer on it pretty comfortably. And then look at all the space. I mean, you could fit the plywood sideways there, even with the shelving unit here. So the first year was the hardest year for us. Uh, we started with a very low budget. Uh, we went down to one salary versus two, um, and it made it pretty difficult. Then we found out we were pregnant. Yeah. And now all these thoughts that never came through your head about how am I gonna provide and what are we gonna do for our kids mm -hmm. came up. Um, so it was very challenging. And then everybody always asks you how you're doing. And the, the question is, is, um, is a good question, but it's a hard answer to give because if you tell people it's a struggle or the struggle is real, nobody wants to work with somebody that's struggling. Yeah. People want to work with people that are successful and they're doing well. I, I mean, we love Arlington Heights. Rob pretty much grew up in here since he was five. Um, since he was three. Um, both of our parents live in Arlington Heights. Um, they're both about five minutes away. Um, so we obviously, this is this is where we're planning to stay. Arlington Heights has so much to offer for, you know, for kids, for adults, for older people. You can see behind me, there's no chimney from the top of the ridge uh, all the way to the top of the next ridge. Uh, there used to be a chimney there and it was actually keeled over and laying on top of the uh, existing structure. So you could see where it's got like dents in there and all this other stuff. We had to uh, build a structure behind it as a temporary structure that was holding up the back as a brace. And we framed it out. And this way, when we were actually taking down the brick, we would take it down piece by piece, but not risk damaging further, uh, further damaging the home. So there's a ton of damage from that wind storm. But what you have to keep in mind is not so much just the wind that causes the damage, it's the flying debris. And if you look over here, you got these trees that were knocked over and they were uprooted. You can actually see the roots are still showing on all of them. Behind me, you'll see that there was this temporary uh, uh, fencing barrier that was put up. And if you look, there's thousands and thousands of homes where they have no fences around them right now because they were torn apart. That debris ultimately got flung into the siding, would leave holes in it. Sometimes you'll see actual little twigs stuck inside the siding. There was one over here where it actually punctured through and it wasn't even that big of a piece, but you can imagine it's like a projectile, like a bullet that gets thrown at, you know, 100 miles an hour. So it's gonna definitely cause some devastating uh, loss to your home. The Chicagoland market is a unique market because there's a lot of competition, a lot of newcomers, uh, granted coming back into this industry like we did back in the day, but their model's a little bit different. There's a lot of, we do a lot of restoration from after hail and wind storms mm -hmm. or tornadoes as of uh, 2021. Um, but seeing that there's no hailstorms this year, we're also noticing that it's kind of getting more difficult for a lot of companies to stay in business. And luckily we've been able to build a brand and, and advertise in the right channels and hopefully gain all, all our neighbors' mm -hmm. respect to, to give us the opportunity to provide them with their roof and siding and gutters and everything else. And we're, we're always looking to improve. I mean, we have weekly meetings just talking about the struggles throughout the week. How do we improve? Always learning from our mistakes. So we're always trying to improve. You have people with trees that hang right over their home. And although it does provide some shade and it's probably some value to that, it's one of the biggest things I see as a culprit to why people get roof leaks. So picture this, you have a windstorm, uh, just like maybe that tornado that we just saw that maybe isn't affecting this house, but the winds are pretty aggressive you're actually gonna see these branches a lot of times fall and hit the, the roof, and they can cause some sizable damage. Even those smaller branches are super heavy and very, very uh, uh, thick. And if your roof is really old and frail, you're just gonna have a huge expense for it. And then finally, think about the rodents. So raccoons love roofs. I used to have seven trees over my house. I can speak from experience. I got rid of it for this one of these, one of these reasons. The best advice before hiring a roofing contractor uh, is look up not just how long they've been in business uh, a lot of 
newcomers uh, escape that reality of how long they've actually been in business by being a salesperson in this industry and they have to be subcontractors. So it appears like they've actually been in business longer than they really have. Um, the other thing that uh, is really important is paying attention to the brand. Uh, do they show up with a car with magnets on it or do they show up with a fully wrapped vehicle? Um, if someone's willing to invest in their vehicles and their signs in their brand, that means that they intend on staying for the long haul. So you're not going to have the, the contractor is going to be around for one to two years and keep switching it so he doesn't have to honor his warranties. You're going to have somebody that's going to be there for the long haul. A uh, couple other things is look up the Better Business Bureau, uh, their rating, look at the okay. reviews. Look them up on Google and, and pay attention to the dates on their reviews. I mean, if everything is just last year and they've been in business for 10, right? Kind you, of scary you, you, you want it. to pay attention to when, when the first reviews were posted. When you look for your roofer, pretend you're getting surgery <laughs> and that you're going to have a heart transplant. You're going to want to find the best, best damn heart transplant guy out there. And you're not going to just skimp on the reviews. You're gonna, you should read all of them because sometimes yeah. even the bad ones will tell you a lot about the company's character. Mm -hmm. And working with a spouse is great as long as you respect the boundaries you know always appreciate the other person it, it doesn't matter if you liked if you didn't like what they did um you know, always give them credit um always support each other it's hard to separate work-life balance especially when you're a couple but it makes it a little bit easier also understanding each other's struggles for the week yeah. and then not having to always ripe on them at work at home or not having somebody yeah. to talk about it because you could talk about it anytime and at least you're not trying to explain why something sucks or is great or is a challenge or is a win. And if, if you work together, it's a family business. Get the kids involved. Our kids, I mean, they love being here at the office. They love going to a job site. Um, our seven-year-old, I mean, since he was five, he was always saying he's going to work for Revived Exteriors. So he's our little guy in training. So get the whole family excited about the business. They build yeah. Lego houses that are three stories high or yeah. two stories high they can touch our skylights yeah. so they design everything on a piece of paper before they get started they come up with where the bathroom will be where the second story will be mm -hmm. where they'll have a bunk bed and they structure everything together then they put a roof over it it's pretty cool yeah it's exciting to see that they have a passion for this stuff too yeah.